Hi, and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how to work with the NetJet desktop application. Without further ado, let's get into it. Familiar. A few days ago, I've uploaded a video about Lightburn and I've introduced uh, the functionality of the software and compare it with the NetJet desktop application. Uh, but after that, I realized that eventually I haven't ever covered an in-depth uh, review tutorial on the NetJet desktop application itself. I only introduced to it in my very first video in this series when I talked about the installation and the setup of the Ninja machine. So in today's video, I want to dive into it to show you all the functionalities and also to talk a little bit about the weaknesses of the software. Okay, here we are on my screen and this is the user interface of the Nejet desktop application. Uh, this is in the version 5.6.3, which is the latest one available to date. And now I will quickly guide you through the interface. So over here on the top you have several tabs. If you move to the first tab which says tutorial, this is basically showing you a web page uh, where you will find all of the informations as well as downloads for your uh, specific machine. As you can see here there are all of the machines from Nege listed including the one that I use and when you click in any one of them that's where we are so as you can see over here we have all the softwares, the drivers, then the application for your uh, smartphone, also if you have an iOS, uh, Mac software, and it's giving you a whole bunch of uh, information including some installation instruction and so on and so forth. So you might want to go uh, and see all of that if you're interested. So the second tab is the photo gallery. Here we can find a large array of images, photos, that we can basically send to our uh, engraving machine. Um, the only problem with this uh, large array is that it's not sortable or searchable by any mean. And every time you are basically opening the software again, uh, the position is different. So if for instance you scroll down like you click through 10 times, and you're thinking to find the exact same things after you click 10 times you won't find it there anymore because they've been shuffled all around. Um, what you want to do when you find something that you particularly like for example for your project or whatever you will just right click and you can say add to favorite. Save it will save it in your computer so add to favorite. Um, when you save it to favorite you will uh, find it under my collection this tab over here here, as you can see, uh, we found what we just uh, saved to favorite, as well as some of the other projects that I previously used. Um, I'll first go through all of the tabs and then I'll show you how we can load projects itself. So then, uh, here we are back to the control tab, which is the opening uh, tab. Okay, over here you find uh, where you can load your projects as well as some of the control and settings for your machine. Uh, then we have the CNC tab. Um, this is basically another web page showing you uh, some information and instruction on how to load uh, G-code type of files and in the two formats that are available as you can see over here. So you can load .nc file and then you can also load .dxf files which are AutoCAD type of files. And finally, in the last tab, you have online G codes. Now, these are different from the photo galleries because these are bitmap actually, I mean photos, some kind of PAG, while these are actual G codes, so that they've been generated by another software. And similarly to the photo galleries, also here you have the option to move up and down, and you cannot sort or search anything. So when you like something you just uh, right click and then add to favorite and once you go back to my gallery you will basically find it back over here. Alright, let's now see how we can load 
um, some of the photos which are already available in the application and then we'll move forward with uh, custom made projects all right uh, let's uh, let's select one of those images that we added to our favorites so to do that just left click once and you can see over here you cannot do anything apart than confirming so give it ok uh, now here you can set the dimension so you can set the size for instance let's say we want to be 80 millimeter wide and then we can eventually reset the size and give it ok uh, it's just worth noticing and this is a downside especially if you are trying to do something precise whenever I set the dimension for some reason the dimension that I want uh, never comes out so let me show you I want it to be 80 millimeters and actually the output on the canvas it's a 79.95 so I believe that this has to do with the tolerances of the machine and also uh, the width of the laser uh, but this is a little bit awkward you know because if you are trying to do something precise as you can see it's always coming out a different dimension so it's worth noticing that alright once you are fine with your dimension give it ok and now here you can select uh, the type of uh, engraving that you would like so you can select this one which is kind of you know like the outline exactly as you can see it or this one where you can adjust the thickness of the line so depending on the type of uh, image that you are trying to load into the machine you will have uh, this one two or three options and some of them has some kind of adjusting capabilities okay so let's go for this one all right once you are here you can edit um, in reality uh, edit here you can uh, do simple rotations flips reverse this is to basically change from black to white and from white to black then you can reload here you can refresh basically what uh, is in the canvas and as well you can clear I won't do that the other interesting thing is that you can add some text say hello okay and then you can um, adjust the font size for instance let's say 36 you can also um, put the um, font that you like okay okay let's say this one scripting you can have also some effects like strike out and underline let's give it an underline and then let's give it okay as you can see nothing yet is here then you have to click in this uh, checkbox which uh, which says insert and as you can see now once I say insert and I'm hovering on the canvas I see something on the mouse so here I can now put it inside and that's my hello maybe it's a little bit too small but that's okay for this demonstration and once you're done with that you can click OK if you wish to add some other text you can say once again insert and we can uh, insert it again there once it's uh, inserted however you won't be able to do anything because the clear will basically clear up everything okay so let me close this let's load it once again so that we can repeat the steps okay okay let's say our text is uh, already inserted and that's uh, just before we can launch it now so once you are ready uh, before to actually launch the, the job uh, you can check uh, where exactly this is going to be engraved into the canvas now if we scroll back all the way the red outline represent the boundary of our engraving area so this is uh, going to basically engrave exactly at the dead center of our uh, canvas so if I'm going to click this you can see that our laser head is going to move towards the center and then it's going to outline the, uh, the area for us 
Now, let's say for instance that uh, you have some uh, uh, constraint, that means that uh, you have to engrave in a specific location. You can use the arrow keys over here uh, in order to move it around. Um, as you can see here, we have a drop down. Here you can set how, uh, what distance each click performs. So now I'm going to move it twice to the left and twice down. And as you can see, this have shifted. Now let's move it a little bit more just to be exactly where we want it to be. If we are still not happy with the position, we can reduce the distance per step. And once we are happy with it, we can just give it a stop and this is basically saved. The final step here is to set up the power and the burning time of the machine. So uh, here basically you can set up the power so depending if you want to engrave, you want to stay somewhere uh, low before the 50%. If you want to cut, you will go up. Everything depends also on the type of material and thicknesses that you are uh, intending to cut, obviously. The burning time corresponds somewhat to the speed. That's basically how long it's going to stay on a single spot, okay? Um, I don't know why they have decided to call it burning time, but in the other softwares you will uh, uh, most likely find uh, the speed of the axis, okay? Um, another important thing, and this is, uh, um, you're going to use it for cutting projects, so the number of passes, this where it says time, so if you wanted to basically uh, pass once and then to repeat it on top, that's basically to perform uh, twice or three times and so on. Uh, there are additional settings that you can change over here. And the settings are basically the brightness of your uh, laser when it's idling. That means when it's not working. This, that's just in case you can see it. Then the sensibility to uh, the tilt. So the machine, at least my machine, the NJ uh, Master 2S Plus, it's built in uh, motion detection. That means that if you uh, move the machine while it's engra engraving, it will basically stop. So it's a safety feature. And you can basically uh, increase or reduce the sensibility. And then the speed of the motors, I would recommend you to leave it into default, which is this medium speed. And we are basically good to go. Once everything is ready, we can click on play. It will take some time to load and then it will start the engraving. As I said, we can also load CNC uh, codes, so the G codes. We can go on the CNC tab and we can click over here depending on what kind of file we want to load. However, I found that it's much easier just on the canvas to right click uh, and to load directly what you want. So, uh, for instance, I can clear this up. Uh, but before to do that, I want to show you that you, you have the chance to basically edit, okay? And you can, when, when you click on edit, you are basically prompt once again to select all of the, you know, options to set the size, to set the style, if you, uh, you want to insert some text or not, and so on, okay? Uh, another thing that you can do at this stage, you can insert some text. Now, you can insert a G-code type of text or a scanning type of text. So, if you don't know exactly what that is, basically, a G-code will uh, uh, create an outline of whatever text you input, while a scanning mode will basically uh, make the um, text completely filled in. So, let's say we want to have a text over here and to say hello. Okay. We can once again set our size and everything else. And then we can give it an insert and boom and OK. And as you can see, um, this actually cleared up the canvas because the insert text, it's basically a new project, is not inserting the text in the uh, project that was already loaded. OK, so that's over here. And once we have the text, once again, we can 
uh, move it all the way where we want. All right, let's now clear it up. Then we can load, let's go for the G code right now. So G codes um, are basically the type of file uh, commonly recognized from a CNC machine, which are numeric control machines like this one. Uh, this machine recognizes the .nc and .dxf code. Now, .dxf is uh, pretty clear. Um, these are produced by CAD type of software. Now, I am an AutoCAD professional and I produce a bunch of examples over here. So, for example, we can load the gear. Let's give it a open. Uh, this is uh, basically telling me which one of the geometries in my original drawing are accepted and not, because not everything can be uh, imported. Uh, so uh, over here you will see that it accepts lines, arcs, circles, uh, polylines. It doesn't accept splines or other type of polylines. I don't know why it repeats the two polylines, solids, ellipses, and so on. So that's worth noticing so that if you happen to design something with your CAD software, uh, you have to design everything with simple geometries without uh, going to these uh, more complex ones. So let's give it OK. And as you can see, our gear is over here. And again, once again, we can set the size, we can put some text, you know, and so on. Now, um, so once you're done, again, you set everything up and you launch it. Let's uh, now try to load an .nc file. Now, if you're following my channel, uh, you should already know how we are producing .nc file. Uh, that's basically through an extension uh, installed on uh, Inkscape. Inkscape is uh, a design uh, software uh, which produces a file in .svg extension. Um, so basically, uh, I have exported a bunch over here. Let's say, for example, uh, the cut over here, whatever, just to try something up. All right, this is, this is nothing interesting. It's uh, part of a project that I've used in my previous video when I demonstrated Light Barn. Anyway, over here, once again, you can set the size and then give it OK and then center, set and go. Finally, we can load directly images. So I will try to load some image it really matter. Okay. So um, let's give it okay. We can set the size. Let's say 200 millimeters. Let's give it okay. And then, as I said, now you have all three options. That's basically what you can do with it. This is with this kind of outline, and this is theatering, okay? So they are basically dots, and most likely this is what, we, what you are going to use when you are actually uh, trying to engrave a picture, especially a picture of people. So you can click on that. Let's set it a little bit better. All right, let's click on that. And then over here again, I can input some text. I can uh, flip the image. I can reverse the colors and to do a whole bunch of manipulation. Let's give it OK. And that's pretty much all. Then you can start. You can launch. Uh, again, you can click on Edit. And you are brought once again to the beginning. So we can leave that aside. So let's try one more. OK. OK. Yeah, we can try, for example, this one, which is kind of outline. See over here? Just to get something nice can click on that and OK. And as you can see, that's going to be our output. OK. And that's pretty much all. Uh, then some other thing to notice, it's over here. You have some, um, you will basically see the scripting, the G code uh, going on. That's basically what the machine uh, sends. Oh, sorry, uh, that's basically what the software sends to the machine. Uh, then over here you have some information, including uh, the temperature. Uh, you can settle your language, if you will. And over here there is a barcode. Uh, I've showed this on one of my videos. That's to set up uh, your uh, um, application in the smartphone. And you can basically send 
images from your smartphone to the NG uh, desktop application so it's some web server that is uh, synchronizing the pictures uh, then over here on the bottom you see the progress bar however the progress bar I found it uh, to lie uh, because when you're working with multiple passes it will basically show you the percentage for each single pass so um, it will reach 100% and then it will go back to zero and restart the progress bar as it's uh, doing the second, the third and the fourth passes, whatever uh, this is the elapsed time Okay, it doesn't show um, how long uh, it will take but only the elapsed time, then some feedback, whatever now, uh, just to briefly tell you what uh, I don't like about the software um, is the fact that if you have projects where you have both cutting and engraving uh, you, would, you would basically need to break down your project into multiple parts then try to keep the reference point so that you can center uh, each individual part and to set to each individual part the various settings so if it's for cutting will be higher power more passes if it's for engraving will be lower power and so on um, another thing that uh, you cannot uh, do it's uh, to basically change the styles for the images uh, if you are following my channel you know that with the laser grbl we can basically manipulate uh, images in a much better way we have more options for the diaphragm, the line horizontal vertical and so on and so forth including the spacing so it is a very basic software you can actually do many things with it but do not expect to go further than the basics so if you want something more advanced already as i said laser, laser grbl uh, it's a step up uh, then if you go to the top you can uh, purchase uh, I think it's like 50 bucks uh, the Lightburn software which is an editing and control software I made a video a few days ago you can have a look on that so and these are basically the options alright and that's pretty much all I hope you found this video helpful if you have any comment leave them below if you like the video click the thumb up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!